Hello and thanks for coming back to the continuation on the Suzuki K-Truck series. In this part of the suspension and death wobble videos, I will go into details regarding new suspension parts ordered and disassembly of all the components. Please watch to the end because there is useful information here and a warning about one of the new parts ordered. The idle arm, this was, a, this was uh, 12 bucks. Now, none of these are Suzuki genuine parts, SGP. That's, none of these are, but however, a lot of these is Orion. I've seen these a lot, uh, online, both from Japan and other uh, dealers, whether it's uh, domestic here in the U.S. or in other parts of the world. So, this has the uh, bushing included. Now, what I have to figure out if these are greased it doesn't feel like they're greased, but I will open this up before I put it in there. It comes with a cotter pin. Both the left and right arms, uh, what do they call it, suspension arm. These are $13.60 each. And I've seen these online, again, non-OEM third party for like 50 to 100 dollars sometimes each and these have the integrated uh, ball joints so it just doesn't feel like it has grease in it so I think they're assuming that you have to put your own grease in it take this off pack it with grease the strut bar the ones that goes from the front body to this point here there's two bushings per strut arm where they meet the body and these were three dollars and thirty five cents each and they're the same exact fit or geometry I'll explain something that I kind of think is going on with this truck what's called the center post we interrupt this program to bring you a special report. This steering arm bushing, I don't recommend you purchase as a third party or non OEM part. After installing this, I noticed the steering wheel had more play and a vibration in the steering wheel at speeds between 48 to 52 miles per hour. As you can see, the inner rubber has too much play. I will be replacing this with an OEM Suzuki genuine part and a separate updated video will follow. The tie rod ball joints, one set for the left, I mean one set for the driver's side, the other set for the passenger side. What I like about this set that I didn't see in other ones, again this is Orion, 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 Orion. <clears throat> this particular one has to be GTX premium quality. And you can see it's for a scrum also. These parts, Sipco. Don't know if these are made in Japan or China. A lot of these parts are made in China. I will have a list of these parts and their part number along with manufacturers in the description. What I like about these uh, ball joints is that they come with Zerk fittings. So I can pack these and you know when I do my maintenance I can put more grease in them just like most ball joints that you find in other vehicles. So there's that set and they come with the cotter pins, castle nuts, some of them you see them with the uh, nylon lock nuts which I particularly don't like that style uh, with the cotter pin that will lock it down. And the biggest ticket item here for $71.73 is the steering rack. One thing that I noticed while I was driving this is that the steering would have a tapping noise in here so it could be that the the rack the pinion and the gear um, has some wear to it uh, over 60,000 
miles on this vehicle it could be but however again these are like two to three times the price online and this is a GTX steering rack now if you may notice anybody who's uh, has an eye for detail it took me a while to figure this out until I read the description in detail this connection point is on the wrong side for this vehicle um, where this connects to the rest of the, uh, I believe all these parts it's on the left or passenger side in the description for this they explain that you you're going to receive this because there are vehicles that has it on the right however what you have to pay attention is all this geometry here how this all mounts to the body where this mounts to the steering column where this port is and it took me a while to take pictures and and lay this out and this is the correct geometry this is the correct part except this is on the opposite side the way they explain this is that you have to cut this off we have to open this up cut this off I'll have to see where and then re-weld it on this side um, and it'll still work they actually explained it before you purchased it so for $72 I couldn't pass this up I mean it's just once it's packed up in there with grease if that's what it takes I will take it completely apart for the welding this is one more piece of the puzzle that I know that when this is all done it'll be all replaced I'll have the uh, link to this website it's RYT parts enterprise and they're out of the Philippines um, their website is pretty detailed for other vehicles um, their price is basically they're selling you the stuff for if you were to get domestic parts here from a local auto parts store if you're just buying um, third-party items these are none of these are OEM parts now the total price for everything you see here is, was over $315 however shipping was $135 and you're wondering why reading some forums they say yeah the shipping is expensive but would you I started looking up they're using international FedEx or FedEx International two to four days depending where you are on the in the world and they just have a, an agreement with so many countries that they'll get you you know your package within two to four days anywhere around the world depending where you are so basically the parts wound up costing me just under two hundred dollars about a hundred and ninety dollars roughly for all these parts and then another hundred and thirty five dollars in shipping now it took them exactly 14 days to process this order that was the only drawback the communications is uh, e emailed them twice during that time they never responded I guess a lot of people asked the same question where's my order where's my order where's my order um, on the 14th day or the day number 15 I get an email saying this is everything that's been shipped here's your FedEx shipping number and I followed this thing from the time they created the shipping label at about I don't know 7 a.m. let's just say Eastern Standard Time here even though it, it kept changing standard times depending what country it was going to it actually got here in about 50 hours about uh, I would say 54 hours I mean that's like less uh, just a hair over two and a, two days two full days from the Philippines straight to New Jersey USA however it bounced all over the place I mean it went from the Philippines to Anchorage Alaska for import uh, issues not issues but they had to check the you know, all the import stuff from there it went to China from there it went back to Anchorage and from there it went somewhere to the Midwest and then from the Midwest to uh, I forgot if it was either New York or New Jersey or Philadelphia and then from there it, it, it made like six stops 
and if you look at it for $135 I got this in almost exactly 54 hours because it was sitting on my doorstep on the third day in the afternoon so and then if you fool around with the parts as far as when you pass a certain amount this will jump up because I went originally from my, what I really needed to around $90 and then I just kept adding and adding and adding and say okay this is worth it so if you take all this and divide it by the parts you're still ahead of the game so if you're gonna order any stuff from them make sure go through the entire inventory for your vehicle and see anything that you may want get it because you're still gonna pay a lot less than if you were to get that part later from either them or another dealer so in the end that's why I added this um, I decided to add this at the last minute and I had I had added the oil cap but unfortunately they didn't have that out of stock so I'll be try to reverse engineer that there's some other um, Suzuki domestic cars here in the US that have the same fitment I just gotta do the reverse engineering so I can get that oil cap because right now I just have a temporary o-ring um, inside of it because it leaks oil what I'm gonna do now the next time you see me I'll have this uh, front end lifted we'll go underneath I'll have the tires out off and I'll figure out where I'm going to uh, one thing I do want to explain where I was explaining about these bushings when I installed these new tires back in December of 2022 I noticed that the driver's side I had no issue with rubbing I had explained in the previous video that the max you can get out of these vehicles without doing a, a, a lift kit is about 23 inches and you'll clear the fenders you'll clear the inner well this side was perfect it had about a half inch clearance to the inside fender however this one this is on full lock left and right however this tire on full left lock it would hit back there would start rubbing so I could never turn you know lock it all the way I mean that wasn't a big issue for normal driving but I kept wondering why why is it this side it just seems and then I started taking some measurements I noticed that the, the gap between this here and here was smaller than the gap on the other side this gap here was larger here than the other side and there is no body damage there's no signs of a crash nowhere on the external body or on the knee I said something happened to this vehicle and I think that this vehicle was just kind of used for deliveries or something because like it has no body damage no through rust uh, it could have been going through a lot of uh, unpaved roads because the inside of the old the original tires are all dirty like dirt brown dirt so this could have been just traveling through um, unpaved roads and the suspension took a lot of abuse and that's why it's worn so what I did is I started taking measurements and what I one thing I noticed is that this is the front of the vehicle from center of tire to center of tire I have 73 and 1 8 inch on the driver's side however on the passenger side I have 72 and 7 16 so it's 9 16 smaller here than it is here and that explains why this tire when it full lock left hits on the fender inside fender right here in this corner it could be that the the a arm that's here with that control arm and you have a bushing on the inside and one on the uh, on the front and one on the back here it could be that these bushings are worn or loose or maybe this one's worn or loose that this a arm is actually going like this giving you the smaller or this a arm is going like this giving you a larger dimension here that's why it's hitting and that could be a one of the many reasons why the death wobble because the front tires are not sitting parallel to the back so I'm hoping with the new bushings everything will go back in alignment 
all these uh, suspension points here, here, here. It could be that this is also loot. This is also worn. That is causing the arm to go this way. Or maybe that one is causing the arm to go that way. Who knows? But I believe that all these bushing and joint connections are worn. I know for a fact that these have rips in them. The grease is probably gone and it's probably full of debris inside. So right now, uh, next time you see me, I'll be underneath the vehicle and I'll see where I'm going to start taking this apart. Okay. Finally, after spending an hour retooling everything here that I last used about two months ago, I'm underneath the truck. Since I don't know what I'm doing, I want to start with what I think is the easiest. I'm going to remove this controller arm, which is two bolts on the lower on the lower arm and then this one bolt here and I should be able to slide everything over. It's a 14 millimeter on the bottom. sides at a time here. I like to think that the issue with the dimensions center to center from the front to rear this being uh, I don't know what I said, about 7 16 difference. I like to say it's this side. But I could be wrong. It's a 19 millimeter for the front bolt here. So worn there. Let's see how this went. Goes like that. The cup facing towards the front. I need to get a hammer. Mm -hmm. 
well what I can see these control arms don't have any damage as far as being bent there's a straight as an arrow This is an indication. Let me get the other one. Or what did I do with the driver's side? Oh, here it is. <clears throat> this is any indication on the driver's side you can see the oblong shape and how deformed it is on this side so you can tell the amount of play there is here at least on this side and this way And just looking at the shape of the original versus the uh, new part, you can see, if, unless it's different, it's almost a heavy eighth gone on the top there or this top. <clears throat> and how disfigured it is, uh, deformed it is for this profile. It's a big difference. Next, I want to take out the um, tie rod <clears throat> along with the tie rod and ball joints. I did this before. <clears throat> I'll clean the uh, frame up. Like, I've been down here a million times and I don't see any damage to this frame, nothing bent. So we're going to proceed with the fact that everything is not what it seems as far as the suspension. Maybe I shouldn't have put these cotter pins on so well. Seventeen millimeters. thing is that I'm going to be refinishing <clears throat> when I do the brake system the shield I'm going to take it out sandblast it powder coat it 
I was thinking about doing this whole assembly here too taking this all apart sandblasting it powder coating it while I've had it out just because like they say in the construction business you might as well plus it'll look nice and cool and shiny Remember, <sighs> this uh, pipe is in the way, plus all this tubing. been two months and I forgot how I took this apart pretty much take this off take this off so I have to get to that bushing there and then this will come out easily so the order if you're doing this just take all your cotter pins out and from what they say on the internet also replace once you use them I did buy a package of uh, cotter pins if you can and if you're willing you have suspension issues I know quite a few viewers have commented that they've had the same issues <clears throat> about the death wobble and on some threads or one the one thread I was in you know they, they were making suggestions do this and do that and some of those suggestions were just masking or putting a band-aid on the issue okay that's done a couple of threads that I read was putting a steering dampener 
to dampen the steering wheel from shaking. Some people were just getting steering wheel issues. But again, you're just masking the problem at hand. Like I was saying earlier, if you can and you're willing to do it, it's compared to a full size truck, this thing is a piece of cake to work on as far as the mechanical issues down here. My recommendation is buy all the parts, buy them all at once, <clears throat> get them from that vendor in the Philippines because the way I looked at it, see, I gotta bang this one out, the way I look at it, this is a bolt here that goes through. And this is the one you have to move back and forth to clear that bolt. Oh, that would have hurt. So here for this, some people call it a dog bone. There is a special screw that has a square head that seats inside of a seat so it doesn't spin I think this is the one that you have to fully extend and then you can clear that bolt right here can clear it here otherwise you got all these uh, tubing and pipe in the way and whatever you do don't lose this because this is sold separately this will be the next thing to go the lower control arms <clears throat> Once you put this back, this this bolt is captured like that. <clears throat> well, I'll tell you one thing. This aftermarket one is uh, a little beefier. That's about a half inch diameter there, and this is closer to five eighths. Now I think I mentioned this before. The Honda Actis. Anyone who has a Honda Acti you're in a world of hurt if you have to replace the ball joints on the tie rod because the few videos I saw on Honda Actis the ball joint is not on the tie rod uh, not on the tie rod these two ball joints are on this yoke that's what I'm going to call it this is expensive this is close to two hundred dollars if you're to purchase it uh, this I do want to clean, sandblast, and powder coat. It's just going to be a, uh, a gloss black that I have. I have the powder coat. I only brought up one bag, but uh, this is going to be the red because I am going to put some What's the word I'm looking for without using the word bling? <clears throat> Details on this. I'm gonna the accent color on this is gonna be red. Just like the red Suzuki S. I'll show a video on that. That's something I custom made. And some of the interior red that I have from the the faux leather stitching is red. So the new disc, brake discs, 
I'm going to powder coat everything except the contact surface. It's going to be powder coated red. This will be most likely black. Um, and on the rear, the drum, that's going to be powder coated red. But I have a gloss, no, a satin black. I forgot what the exact name of it is that I purchased for these parts. These, I'm still on the fence what I'm going to do with this. Since I have the oven here, um, basically this can't go into my shop. It has no room. It's going to live out here until I build my new shop. However, I have 30 amp, I have temporary 30 amp service coming to this point. That's how I was able to test that and then use my welder and plasma cutter. I'm going to powder coat this. So this is going to be a lengthy um, next couple series. I know I'm up to three now with this one. So I may go on to more series. Uh, my goal now is to pretty much disassemble everything. And get it ready for powder coating. Uh, the reason that I decided to do this is like I mentioned before the oven I have is like one of those toaster ovens from uh, Eastwood that I bought originally with my powder coat uh, kit. Uh, something like this it, even if I took these this off wouldn't wouldn't fit in there uh, as small as this. This once I put the other the rack that I have for this um, I'll be able to to hang this in here and powder coat it. I'm also going to be powder coating one of the original uh, wheels in order to install a new um, spare tire that I purchased. That's here. That'll be another video. So the only other thing I have to do today is I got to take those lower control arms off <clears throat> those already finished from the factory so I don't have to wor worry about that plus they have the integrated ball joint <clears throat> now I'm not sure there is a type of screw pin that holds this assembly to this ball joint so I have to take that out first to separate this and then I can take this off and then I'll show you the uh, rips that are in that boot it looks like a 14 yeah 14 yeah other sides are 14 also that assembly This looks like another 14. Oh, here. Let me see if I can. It dies. Right there. The other side is identical. When I can see there is a little bit of grease, how good that grease is, I don't know. It's hard to tell of any play. And then you have this bushing here. If I take this screw, 
I know some people have had issues with this where this bushing has been worn out or oblong. I mean, there is some play in it in both directions. The new one has the same play. Okay, I'm going to let you go. Take the other side apart. And that's all this uh, disassembly of the front end suspension. And I will catch you on the next one. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all the new subscribers. I appreciate that. And especially thanks for all the people who are clicking on the Amazon links. Um, it helps to buy some of this stuff. And I'm glad that people are getting some useful information out of this. Anyhow, thank you and uh, see you next time.